Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to morning prayer. Um, the service this morning is found in the description. You can download your own copy, and I believe it starts on page 45, 6, 7. Morning prayer. Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall, shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. <laughs> o Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. God rules over all the earth. O come, let us worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. O come, let us worship. The Lord is our refuge and our strength. O come, let us worship. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. We pray that your hearts and your minds and your ears are open to the proclamation of God's word. Our first reading is from the book of Judges, chapter 4. After Ehud's death, the Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord turned them over to King Jabin of Hazor, a, a Canaanite king. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harasheth Hegayim. Sisera, who had 900 iron chariots, ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. Deborah, the wife of Lapidith was a prophet who was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day she sent for Barak, son of Ebenom, who lived in Kadesh in the land of Naphtali. She said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you. Call out 10,000 warriors from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun at Mount Tabor, and I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors, to the Kishon River. Then I will give you victory over him. Barak told her, I will go, but only if you go with me. Very well, she replied, I will go with you. But you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Our psalm today is Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid, to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. Our first reading comes from, oh, our second reading comes from Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the end of the day the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in the darkness, for that day you surprise like a, a thief. For you are ch all children of the, the light, and children of the day, we are not the night or the darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. 
But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, put the, upon the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for the wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whatever we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For it is as if a man going on a long journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. The same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. For a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But the master replied, You wicked, lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have at least received what was mine with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of Christ. Christ to you, Christ to you Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me today for morning prayer. Thank you for joining uh, me for this reflex reflection. Um, today, we are talking about a very, very well-known and uh, wildly, wildly common parable that Jesus speaks about in the Gospel of Matthew, and it's the parable of the talents. Now, I don't know why, but it seems like this parable has been coming out more and more and more and more and more, and I'm, I'm really aware that I say things sometimes and I repeat them. And I don't like that idea. So today, w rather than maybe a sermon, we're going to engage in a little bit of a thought experiment because something kind of exciting um, came to me when I, was, when I was meditating on this scripture earlier today. So the story is, is that Jesus tells, Jesus tells the folks, he says, there was a, a rich man. And this rich man, um, he goes away for a very long trip. And he gives one of his servants uh, five talents, five coins. He gives another three, and he gives the third one. And then he goes away on his trip. And it says he's gone a while, but then he comes back. And when he comes back, and of course, please understand, I'm paraphrasing. But when he comes back, he calls the servants to him, and he demands an account of what, what they've done with their money, what they've done with his money, to be more specific. Now, the first one, he gave five talents, and that servant says, I knew, you to be a, uh, I knew you to be a hard man. So I took your five talents, and I invested it in here. Now I have ten talents to give back to you. 
And the master says, nice job. Excellent work. I'm pleased with you. Come, give me a hug. Again, I'm paraphrasing. The second servant, three talents. He comes and says, man, I, I knew you were tough. So I took your three talents and I invested them. And now I've got six. Here's your six talents. And the master says, oh, you rock too. Come here, give me a hug. Third man, he comes up and says, I knew you to be a hard man. You gather where you do not sow and you harvest what is not yours. And I, who I wanted to make sure I protected this coin. So I buried it in the ground. Here's your coin back. And the rich man, the master says, what? The least you could have done was put it in the bank so that I could earn some interest. You, you bother me. You disgust me. Take, take him away and give his coin to the fellow with 10. He knows what to do with it. Now we know the traditional moral of the story is to take what you have, invest it, uh, and, and this is in, take what God has given you and invest it and make it greater and greater and greater for God's glory. But where my brain went today was I, I was thinking about I was thinking about doing a a talk on uh, I'm going to start doing some talks on Jesus as a progressive. Uh, I'm not certain about Jesus as a socialist or any of the other ists. But he definitely was a progressive. And so as I thought about that, and I thought about this parable, all of a sudden I started seeing the notion of, of, of being a progressive in it. I see a progressive sees the future and says, we need to take what we have and invest it somehow to get to that better future. We need to, to use our brain power and, and do things that'll, that'll lead us to a brighter future. We need to take our resources and use them in such a way that we can get to a brighter future. We need to take our, our infrastructure, or whatever the case might be, well, we need to get to that better future. We need, the, we need to earn our way. We need to work our way. We need to invest our way into that place. Whereas a non-progressive would say, no, no, we need to stay just where we are, exactly where we are. We don't want to change anything at all. We want to save. We do not want to risk anything. Now, sometimes this parable could be seen like, oh, the guy took five and he made 10. It was the easy peasy. The Bible doesn't say that, right? It doesn't say every one of his ideas. The, the man took his five talents, invested it once, got a, a 100% return, and there it is, right? Ideally, you know, realistically, realistically, this was a, probably a series of investments that the man made with these talents over a, period, over a long period of time, right? And sometimes it would have worked and sometimes he would have lost money and sometimes, he, you know, sometimes it would have worked and he would have gained money and sometimes it, it would have failed and he would have lost money. But over the long stretch, he was able to double the initial investment that the master placed in him. Same for the second guy. The third guy is the only one that didn't take a risk. He's also the only one that didn't fail. But because of that, because he was so stringent and because he was so terrified of losing what had been given to him, he didn't budge. You know, it's interesting. I was speaking to a guy the other day and his mom used to be like the matriarch of, of my parish, of my church. And um, her name was Sis. And and sis, apparently her, she had a favorite, ex a favorite um, expression and it was people who do nothing, do nothing wrong. Right? That third guy just didn't want to do anything wrong. And so he held to what he had. He held to what he had, hoping the master would be okay that he didn't lose the money. But see, you and I, are, we're not called to white knuckle the things in our life. We're called to take wise and discerned chances. We're called to take what has been given to us and with wisdom and discernment to invest them so that we can move forward and we can grow and we can, we can multiply what we have. You know, so now I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, this parable not necessarily just from the perspective of 
Jesus telling us to multiply the gifts that God gave us, but rather Jesus telling us to multiply the gifts that God gave us in order to live and, and to, to work our way into a brighter future, to, to act like a progressively minded person, to not be afraid to take some chances Always, again, always using our noodle, always using the brains that God gave us, always using our wisdom. But being willing to invest that which we've been given to build up a better community, to build up a better world, to, to create a brighter and, and, and more robust and more abundant and more prosperous future for everybody. There are more than a few times in the Bible where God tells us to be bold. Let's be bold with what he's given us. Let's be bold with what he's given us so that we can create for ourselves and for our neighbors and for our country and for our world a better place. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and I pray that you will always know the peace of being in God's presence. And I pray that you and I together will walk a bold, progressive path investing all that God gave us for the betterment of all those people around us. Amen. And now we confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I, I believe, believe in God. God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in prayer. Let us pray together to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your many gifts to us, for the love which brings us together, for the earth which provides for our needs, for the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for our Christian family. We ask for grace to grow in your love. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our YouTube family all around the globe for peace, perspective, and power to keep doing their good work in their communities. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for our world, for all its cares and needs, and for all who lead us and care for us. Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for those in need, for the sick and the lonely, for the hurt and the frightened, and for those who live without hope. Lord, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. We pray for those we love who have died, that you will surround them with your care and love, and surround us who grieve with your comfort and your great hope. Lord, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for one another, asking you to bless us, our friends, our relatives. Bless the places where we work and bless our home and our life together. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now, Lord, we want to remember before you our selfish ways, the things we have done wrong, the sorrows we have caused, the love we have not shown. Merciful Father, forgive us our sins against you and against each other. Strengthen us to overcome our weaknesses that we may live in love as you would have us live, 
for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 Now our collect of the day. Almighty God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us, and bring us to eternal light and joy. <laughs> Through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as we think of the many things that God has given us and all that we are able to give in return, we pray, Holy God, in this time of worship and prayer, we renew our baptismal covenant. Help us through our offering this day to renounce all things that draw us from your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you for joining us today. And we will see you all again very, very soon.